Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, get things done with our productivity roundup. And is Facebook places out to ruin your privacy? Plus, iPad spotted in the wild, the celebrity edition. All that plus our app caps, all next on iPad Today. This episode of iPad Today is brought to you by iStock Photo, the web's original source for royalty-free stock images, media, and design elements to help you get creative with your website or blog. Check out their special offer at iStockPhoto.com slash iPad Show. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to AudiblePodcasts.com slash iPad Today. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account, go to Squarespace.com slash twit. Hello there, Miss Sarah Lane. Hi, Leah Laporte. How, How are, are you? I was just going to say that. How are you? You look fantastic. Well, Fabulous. Thanks. I just got a haircut. I'm feeling very springy. As you said on Twitter, you got fringed, not banged. That's right. And I understand why you are. said that. Yeah. Well, I said both. It looks I think cute. One sounds better than the other. It looks Thanks. cute. I like Thanks. it. No, it's good. It's you never good. comment on um, my hair. I do actually. It's just well, just you, gray did you get and a haircut shaggy. lately? No, no. Yeah. Actually, well, last week. You never know with boys. You can't tell with They're boys. Just, it's short. And women love to use that against their husbands. You didn't notice I got a haircut, didn't you? Well, you know, um, someone very dear to me said, oh, "Well, the color is great," and I said, "I didn't get my hair colored." <laughs> You got to be careful. I got bangs cut. And how's that pregnancy going? <laughs> you got to be careful, guys. This is something I have learned over the years. Today, we're going to talk about productivity apps on the iPad. That's right. Productivity apps. Woo that's now, that's a big category. About, we've talked about office apps in the past, and this is more geared towards getting things done, mm -hmm. doing things on the fly, making sure that you're able to uh, digest information uh that's uh, the least time consuming, I guess, and the most organizational. First note, I first uh, product I install on anything, whether it's an Android phone, an iPhone, or an iPad, and I'm very, I was so pleased to see that they did an iPad application very early on, is the great Evernote. Do you use Evernote? Yes, and I've actually, I'm excited to kind of see what you, how you use it on your iPad because I've been using it on the web for years. Well, that's the nice thing is that it, it's it's on every platform you could possibly want. What happens is you create notebooks, and these notebooks uh, can contain notes. Mm -hmm. And everything, I use it for passwords, for serial numbers, things I'm trying to remember, research for this show even. You can tag them. You can, this is really nice for the iPad. You can use GPS to tag them as well. Hey, so, that's us. Yeah. This is, you know why? This is a note that I created here at the Twit Cottage. So, look, this is the Places page. On the, this is the iPad version, which is really nice. This is something that is not on some of the other versions. And uh, you can use it. Windows, uh, every platform, you can use it. It syncs to the, uh, automatically syncs to the uh, web. Now, I have a premium account. Uh, you don't, you can do this. It's apps, the app's free. The, uh, the syncing is free. But if you have the premium account, you get a few extra features, including one of the things I really like, which is it will do some text recognition on photos which makes it much easier to find a photo. So if you take a photo of something, uh, it will do the text recognition, and you can go back and search for the text that was in the photo. You can have some notebooks offline if, you're, if you've got privacy uh, issues. You know, you don't want everything on your, on your, uh, on your uh, iPad, but I have everything on my iPad. So that means even when I can't get online on the iPad, if I'm in an airplane, I can work in Evernote, and when I get back, I can synchronize with my notebook. Synced. Everything is synced on every platform. I mean, and there are so many uh, instances where I'm looking at something online and I go, "Oh, this is so cool," but later I kind of forget what I wanted to apply it to. Right. It was a website. I could just add a little Evernote. This would be great for iPad today. Uh, make a note to myself to maybe contact somebody I know over at Wired Magazine to talk about it. That kind of thing. So I have hundreds and hundreds of, of notes in here. Yeah, and what you like. You can see some of these notes are pictures, and, and th one of the things I do is I take pictures of wine bottles. If there's a if there's a wine I really like, I'll take a picture of it. 
This Bordeaux that we really liked, I said, was the best yet. Just downloading the picture. You've, that you've ever had ever? Well, we were trying. We did a tasting. We went to Costco. John, John C. Dvorak said, they've got great Bordeaux at Costco. Costco and I bought wine a, tasting. Half a dozen Who of knew? them. I know. And Jennifer and I tried them, and this was the one we liked the best. So now I have a picture of it so that I can find it. I mean, how many times do you say, I, that was a great wine, but you don't take the time to write it down? Oh, I, if, I don't, if I don't make a note of it or take a picture, I'll never remember it exactly. again. No matter what I think. So this mentally, is a really good we use. Just don't have, we just don't have the space mentally to remember all the stuff. I'm so it's such a good tool. You can also do audio notes, which is really handy. Uh, you can, it has a recorder built in. Uh, you can uh, take pictures. Um, I, I take pictures of parking spaces, <laughs> so I won't forget where I parked. Oh you can gosh, even use the geotagging to do it. I mean, I can go on and on. Beautiful interface. It's easily the best interface of any Evernote experience. Like, these are the tags. Uh, it's got searching, very powerful, capable searching, and you can save searches. So if there's a search you perform a lot, you see I say, I'm always searching for my credit card numbers. I have a credit card search. It will automatically bring me my credit Let's card Let's open notes. that one. Let's not. <laughs> Uh, I think ever here's here's the vehicle identification number of my Mustang because I can never remember that so I took a picture of it. Why do you need that? Well, sometimes people, you know, when you fill out insurance forms and right. things like that. Yeah, um, getting out of jail. I was at, at people's houses. Jennifer says, "Hey, that's a really uh, good-looking bush. What is that plant? I don't know. I take a picture of it using my iPhone." Mm -hmm. Or my droid. It'll work with anything that Evernote's on. And now it's in my database. I don't know. I don't even have to know what I took this picture with. And I can find the name of the plant and I can search for it later. So I, I, look, it's free. It's free. Why not have it? Evernote. So that's my pick for number one. Actually, it was yours. But it's okay. I, I stole it. Yeah, that's all right. I think uh, one of the nice things about Evernote is not everybody uses it, but the people who do Everyone says, I can't live without it. Now that I have Evernote, I mean, the user experience definitely speaks for itself. There are other notepad apps on the uh, on the iPad, but this is my favorite. Absolutely. Uh, next uh, part of our productivity theme, Instapaper. Now, many folks have heard of Instapaper, but if you haven't, I guarantee you, I'm about to change your life. So what do you, how do you use Instapaper? Cause so what I do is, you know how you were talking about when you're doing research for one of these shows? Mm -hmm. It's like I have the same problem where I'm looking at a million sites um, on a regular basis and I need to take a note and I don't necessarily know what to do with it. I just want to know that I want to read it later. Yeah. So all I do is, is um, let's say here, let me go to Safari first. So I'll show you how I do something like this. You could have, and by the so way, this works this with is, a desktop computer too. You can have an Instapaper it bookmark anywhere. It does. In fact, Instapaper has been around on the desktop for quite a while. In fact, uh, the programmer of Tumblr is the guy who made it. Oh, I didn't Mark know that. Yeah, You're yeah. kidding. Yeah, he's he's pretty smart. Anyway, so I've got this little Instapaper bookmark lit up at the top here. So if I wanted to save this page, this could be any web page, anything. I just hit the little link, and it lets me know, saved, up in the left-hand corner. Our wireless might be a little bit slow right now, but anyway, so... And, and now you can read it later. For instance, I was... Uh, and it could be about anything. I was doing research on the McChrystal incident, so I just saved a bunch of columns... And now I can read them at any time. You you have, what do you, help for autism? You have oh, it's Photopedia? Also, well, it's I help for autism because it was a neat uh, story about that. kids oh. who are taking to iPads. Oh, and I thought neat. to myself, I want to do something on our show. I don't know what yet, so I'm just going to save it for Great later. Great for research. Now, Instapaper has a free version, but the uh, the full version is $4.99. And the reason that it's great is because it gives you a bunch of different settings. For example, you can change the look. You know, you can have a dark interface. You can have rotation on. You can choose um, between scrolling or pagination for your articles. You can send. You can share uh, with your Tumblr or Twitter accounts. You can add... Um, articles to a variety of different places. So let's say I go into, well, this is actually, that was just my little, uh, let's go into this autism story because we were talking about before. So I read it and I'm really interested in it. Now this is it. a good point is that they're scraping the page. So it really makes it look like an article. You don't get a lot of the extra junk that you'd see on a exactly. web Exactly. And that's the, the whole point of Instapaper is it's supposed to be a great tool for when you need to read stuff later. Not only if you're online, but let's say you're offline. All you need to do is just load it up once then you can be underground on a subway and you're reading all your stuff because it's already been saved. So let's say I love this article. I think it's really amazing. And by the way, I can change a bunch of different text options. I can make it look a lot of different ways. If I send it, my sharing options are really great. I can email the link. I can post a Tumblr. I can send a Tweety or Twitter later or Twitter. You know, it's, it's making use of a lot of the best iPad apps out there. And then if I want to change to pagination, instead of scrolling, I just hit the bottom 
and it, it kind of has does a Kindle it, feel on to the it. Uh, iPhone. It does tilt scrolling. Does it do tilt scrolling on the uh, iPad? Sure does, and you can turn that on and off. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I know. So it'll scroll when you tilt it. I don't know. That may be a gimmick. You can also star things for people who are who are they're used to sort of the Gmail way of organization or archive. That's all built in as well. You also have the ability to create folders so that you can organize your stuff. I mean, if you're saving enough articles. Then saving alone, I haven't actually made too good a use of folders, but that's really my next step because I'm starting to save so many things that if I knew I want to save stuff for iPad, I want to save stuff for green tech, I want to save stuff for TNT, then that would you just help me be organized even more. So Instapaper, couldn't recommend it more. Four ninety nine on the, the uh, iTunes uh, app store. There is another program very similar called Read It Later. Some people prefer it. I don't see much difference between the two. I've been an Instapaper user for years free to set up an account. There is an Instapaper Pro account, or you can, but you do need to buy the, uh, the app. Uh, our, four, our third app in our productivity category, and, and again, I'll emphasize productivity could be a lot of things. So we just kind of picked three things that we found really useful and handy. This is called Elements. It's a text editor. Now, I know a lot of you spent the $10 on pages and bought pages the word processor but really uh, on the iPad word processing probably is overkill a text editor is probably all you need and I think this is a really simple nice text editor with one really nice feature after you create your files it automatically saves it to Dropbox Ooh, now every cool. everybody may not know what Dropbox is but it, but Dropbox is kind of the single most useful productivity tool out there it is a website you, uh, you can get two gigabytes for free. I think I have a 50 or 60 gigabyte Dropbox uh, account because we store so much stuff there. But what happens is Elements creates an Elements folder on Dropbox where anything that you create on the iPad is automatically saved and can be accessed anywhere else you access Dropbox. Now, Dropbox has clients for Windows and Mac. You could also do it through the web page. So the same document that is on my iPad is on my desktop. Oh, that's great. And if you're already in Dropbox all, all the time Which anyway, then everything's just in a folder. Yep. So it's just super helpful. It's a, it is, you know, again, it's for somebody who wants to, who uses Dropbox or has heard about Dropbox and wants to use it, two gigs free, which is plenty for plain text files. And it really solves that problem, which I think is still a big problem of getting files into and out of the Macintosh. You don't have to do any exporting. You don't have to do anything. You just edit it. Now, of course, as you would expect, it also has the capability of emailing your, uh, emailing your, um, your file somewhere you don't have you know you're not stuck with just using Dropbox you can't export it uh, there are a lot of other features uh, there's a scratch pad on it um, which is a great place to kind of put stuff for later use uh, you have font control not a huge selection of fonts but but pretty good I don't know that's plenty <laughs> that's more than enough that's plenty I know some people go font crazy but I only need like five type sizes from 8 point to 24 point uh, you do have colored text, which gives you some, some you know, it's, look, it's yeah, not. You you can customize it to, to a point. Yeah, it's you not. You can choose violet text, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, it's not. A, it's not <laughs> you can choose black text on a black background if you really want to go crazy. There is a spell checker. It does support text expander for those of you who use text expander. And that would be another kind of freebie tip uh, on the iPad and the iPhone and on the Mac, certainly. Text expander is great. Uh, it's simple, uh, not a complicated program, not not super elaborate, but also not super expensive. Four ninety nine. It's called Elements Dropbox powered text editor from Second Gear. Just another handy productivity tool for getting data, uh, text primarily into and out of your iPad. So those are our three favorite productivity apps for the week. We always want to hear your suggestions, and we've loved the ones that you've had so far. In fact, we decided to do productivity apps because we've gotten so many suggestions of people saying, loved the Office apps, but more productivity apps. You know, how do I, how do I keep organized? How do I get things done? So if you have ideas, um, or, well, if you want to watch our productivity apps again, or you want to watch our Office apps, that was episode three, you can visit us at twit.tv slash IPT. And if you have a theme idea of your own, you can let us know at iPad Today at twit.tv. Speaking of episode three, we did get an email from Susan Galbraith, who's a senior energy analyst at uh, Tatum Engineering. She had a really good point. We had um, we had gone over pages and numbers in Keynote. Uh, she wrote in and say, pages and numbers for the iPad, they don't allow the user to insert comments or other editors' notes to documents. And part of my work- I can't annotate, which yeah, is really annoying, yeah. Involves mentoring our new employees. And so she has to be out out and about marking their documents on the fly, iPad's not useful for that. This limitation is a serious problem for me and I'm sure a lot of other people like educators or 
members of project teams, but she has a workaround. She loves an application called iAnnotate PDF, which allows the user to insert notes and highlighting into PDF files. So if she wants to edit something or write a note or highlight, she can convert the document to a PDF and then annotate to her heart's content with iAnnotate PDF. She says, I I'd prefer if pages and numbers were, were updated to allow editing, but since they're not, iAnnotate PDF is better than carrying a MacBook Pro and also the iPad when I'm traveling for work. I, uh, I actually use this. Steve Gibson recommended this to me as a great way to do annotated PDFs. It's one of, it's one of the, few, the few applications that will let you do that uh, on the iPad. And you can see I'm doing it right now. Really, I agree. I annotate PDF. Is, it's expensive. It's not a cheap application. But it is yeah, very it's about useful. Yeah, it's, I bought it immediately after Steve described it. It really is cool. Well, you know, she she did she she made a really good case, and I can think of uh, uh, many uh, professions where people would really need something like that. And and hey, the if if uh, if numbers or um, or pages aren't doing it for you, then it's a really good option as well. So, so thank, thank you, Susan. Susan. That's a four. We get a fourth, an extra, a freebie. We do uh, from just thanks to Susan. Well, some of our audience members are really smart. They really are. <laughs> so, and if you're we'll so smart, as much as possible. If you're so smart. You ought to know about Audible.com. Oh yes. Do you I'm ever sure. listen to audiobooks? Yeah. In fact, I'm doing this little experiment. I was talking to Amber about it the other day, where I'm reading um, a book called "Let the Great World Spin." Mm. I'm really interested in it, and I'm going to listen to the audiobook immediately afterwards and see how it helps my imagination sort of morph. I I think you're you, you're actually onto something. Listening to a book. Is different. It is very different. It triggers different centers. Um, I find listening to fiction like watching a movie. I my mind draws a picture, and uh, when I've listened to great books, uh, you know the great thrillers and so forth, I feel like I've already seen the movie. So I always listen before I go to a movie, and that's one thing Audible's great for. If you've got a commute, if you're in the gym, I don't commute anymore. I started Audible when I was doing the screensavers, and I would listen nonstop. Yeah, we're re we, we've we reversed ourselves. You, you commute. don't commute, and now I commute up yeah, here. Yeah, but I do go to the gym every day, and that's an hour of reading I get every day, which I love. So you, you, you this is the uh, 2009... Uh, uh, oh, award winner so for good uh, national so far, too. award winner for fiction. You really like it, oh, Colin I love McCann. It. You know what? This is going to be nice because it's a performance. It's not. Let me play just a little bit of this for you so you can hear. Yeah, it. there's a bunch of uh, yeah. A bunch it's a of performance. Voices. Sometimes they do this on Audible.com. Instead of just reading it, they Con perform Ed, it. Ma Bell, Wall Street. A locksmith in his van on the corner of Die and Broadway. A bike messenger lounging against a lamp. I'm adding this to my list, I have oh, to yeah. say. You now, here's a way it. you can get this for free. Just go to audible.com, actually, audiblepodcast.com, slash iPad today. And this book, or any one of the 75,000 titles at audible.com, almost all of them are a single credit, could be yours. You can cancel at any time, and that first book is yours for free to keep forever. Audiblepodcast.com, slash iPad today. If you haven't started listening, it works great on the iPad. You've got to. Audiblepodcast.com slash iPad. Free book. We thank you for their support. What's the name of that book again? Let the Great World Spin by Colin McCann. I'm adding that to it. Oh, so it's, you, it's, what's it it's about? Great. It's, uh, you know how there was a, a French tightrope walker yeah. that walked between the Twin Towers? Yeah, love that. It, so it's a fictional novel about the people who are living their lives in New York City Same when that here. actual historical event occurred. So it's a fictional novel, but it's based on non-fictional events. Philippe Petit, have you seen the... Uh, 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 documentary they did about that? No. <gasps> well, you got to see that before you read the book. It's Darn awesome. Darn it. I'm doing <laughs> what's, it backwards. Chat room, what's the name of that? Um, if the, the Philippe Petit, uh, it's on Netflix. You can watch it streaming on your iPad. Oh, my gosh. It is so, so, so good. Well, it's just, it's, just a, it's an extraordinary event. And Man on a Wire. Thank Man you, on Tons, 1999. You know what's so funny? I, when I hear Man on a Wire, I think of Man on Fire, which is that Denzel Washington movie, which <laughs> takes place that. down in Mexico. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Totally different movie. Must Man watch. on a Wire. I'll have to. And I think it'll give some depth <laughs> to the book as you read it. Now I want to watch, now I want to read the book. Sounds great recommendation. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Audible. So what's the latest news from the iPad world? <laughs> well, Facebook Place is launched. Yeah. So. I have my iPhone and it's not doing it yet. It says you'll be included as soon as we get around well, to you it. Know, Is it I, doing um, it on yours? What what happened was on my iPad, I decided to try to fire up the guy and what I, when you when you search for places this is at least as of last night in the store, nothing comes up or or if you if you try to just update your Facebook app, right. nothing comes up, but if you search for it and then you 
reinstall. So you have to force install you have to force the next install, version. Or at least, you, you know, you did last night. Then I get my little pa places, if you can see here. See, there's oh, yeah, my there little is. places guy. But then click it. But then if I click it, I oh, only get do. updates from some friends. Look, Tom's here. Oh, well. well it's starting to work. It's starting to work. Woohoo! Hey, cool. Well, TechCrunch's MG Siegler was there. He was at the event, and he joins us right now. In fact, he's already updated that he's at his home. We now know where you are, now. MG. <laughs> hey, how's it going, guys? It's great. Good to see you. Welcome to iPad Today. Tell us, you went to, Facebook had an event last night to, yep. to introduce places. Right. Uh, yeah, so it was an event that went on for quite a while uh, down in Facebook's headquarters in Palo Alto. Uh, and, you know, they really put together kind of a, a big presentation. It's a little weird going down there. It's always kind of like being at college again. But, um, you know, they showed off what is their location-based service now, which is called Places, and it's basically a new check-in app. So it's competing with Foursquare, Gowalla, Yelp. But it's also Who else is doing check-in now? Uh, there's that new scavenger. with all these folks, though, too. So that's sort of unclear, isn't it? Right. So they had... Um, they had Foursquare, Gowalla, Booyah, which makes that app My Town, but they're doing a new app now. I actually now. like or, My Town. It's kind of fun. Yeah, that's more of a game yeah. uh, based around location. And then, um, then also Yelp. We're all there uh, to be launch partners of this um, thing. So they're basically using the API, and when you check in via one of these apps, be it you know Foursquare or Gowalla, it will push it into this new places area in inside of uh, Facebook. So you don't have to use the Facebook check-in. You could use these other programs and it would just but i could always do that i could just add the rss yes. to my stream what's new that's that's the interesting thing about the foursquare implementation in particular because so gowalla is doing it a little bit different where i believe they're going to use read and write access so you'll be able to check in on facebook ah. and have it push to your gowalla app and so people can see in your gowalla stream that you're also uh, checked in via Facebook. But Foursquare, as far as I know right now, is only doing it the same way basically that they have been doing it, where you check in via the Foursquare app and you can push it to the Places stream. It's just now it's it resides in this new Places area rather than being uh, just kind of vague, uh, you know, status update. But isn't the weird thing about uh, f the way that Facebook is implementing Places and, and people are always up in arms about Facebook privacy in general is that you could check in somewhere and say that I was with you without me checking in and let everybody know where I am, which right. is out so of my control. So this is the big kind of feature that they talked about a little bit, and you know Zuckerberg kind of played it that this was their differentiating factor. So basically, you can check in somewhere, and you can tag anyone that you're friends with on Facebook to say that you're there with them. But there's That's a few scary. interesting points of this because, first of all, when you tag someone and say like that, that you're there with them, they yeah. have to actually um, they have to okay it. They have to say like, oh. yeah, it's okay if they tag me. Okay that I'm here right now. And it's like either a yes, it's okay, or it's a not now later. So there's no like opt out in that little pop-up that comes up, but you can go into your privacy settings and say like, don't let anyone tag me. And of course, it's important to note that you can only tag people you're actually friends with on Facebook. It's not just like, I can tag anyone in the world. But you can imagine how complicated that would be if you and I go somewhere and you've let the third person know that you've gone to the dentist and then all of a sudden I've tagged you and then they get their feelings hurt. It's just they're, complicated. They're, they're open up. Well, this is the problem with Facebook in general. It's, it's just a way to hurt people's feelings. <laughs> That's really what it's turned into. That's Zuckerberg's main goal, isn't it? <laughs> That's what all of this, unfortunately, all of this publicity has done. It just, it hurts people. I, uh, I, I'm, when at F8, they showed, uh, a, they kind of talked a little bit about this and they showed an RFID tag that you could wear that would automatically check you in. Right. Yeah, they've been doing stuff like that for a while. They said they've been experimenting with what exactly they want to do, you know, in, in the location space. And they actually had, they have this thing. It started as, I think, a keg, uh, a keg bot where, you know, they have a keg right. inside the Facebook offices. And if you have uh, your badge, you just go up to it and swipe it and says like, hey, so-and-so Facebook employee just checked in at the keg bot. So, you know, obviously they're drinking right now. And yeah, they did it at F8 and that's the it same really, thing. It really is a frat party there. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. <laughs> well, th we should, uh, of course, say that this is off by default. You don't have to use this. You opt in. Thank you, Facebook, for at least doing it opt in. Boy, they would have hit a real storm if they had made it uh, automatically on. Oh, there's still going to be a storm. I mean, they, within uh, within like a half an hour of them announcing this, the ACLU had a post ready to go. Oh, I don't know how they already knew like some of the details about it, but they had you know like a 500 word post ready to go. What did they say? <laughs> what is the ACLU saying about this? They didn't like, oh, what don't they like? They didn't like that if you opt in to use it and tag your location that you can't specifically state 
uh, which groups or which people you want right. to see your location. It's either all or nothing. So you and, know. They and by the of, way, this is what Google has been saying again and again and again: is there are not it's not a homogenous group of people. You have close friends, you have family. There's different stuff, and this is, I think, what Google is saying: is we're not going to do it the same way. Facebook continues to say everybody's your friend. Well, and, and Facebook is the one place where I mean, I'm friends with. People I didn't even like in high school, and that's the you know, problem. That's it's it's different from Twitter that's because it's a two-way friendship kind yeah. of a thing, yeah. and that yeah, gets complicated. I, I will say that's that's kind of one major issue with this is that obviously Facebook didn't launch with location, whereas something like Foursquare did. Right. You know, it was all about that to begin with. So it's like, are the people that you friended on Facebook necessarily people that you want to be sharing your location Not with? If you do want to share your location, and G Siegler writes for TechCrunch. He's also on TechCrunch TV, TechCrunch.com. He's the best writer there. He's I think easily so and a handsome, handsome guy. He's Thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> I like those glasses. Yeah. Did, did you choose them, Sarah Lane? <laughs> no, I did not. I Thank choose you. his own glasses. Thanks, MG. Great to talk to you again. Bye, MG. Yeah, thanks. Take guys. care, MG Siegler from TechCrunch. Dot com. He's like the, their location guy too. So Is he's he? yeah, oh yeah. He's he's like the Foursquare. I don't know aficionado if there is one. I check in all the time. He's always getting Square. crap from the TechCrunch commenters about that, but he's, I don't know. It's interesting. It's fascinating, right? You should see at the bottom. I have a row on my phone where it's Foursquare. I don't do Gowalla anymore. I had to leave something out. Me too. Foursquare. Um, this new uh, pick please thing, which is a Android application to take a picture and check in on Foursquare. Uh, Scavenger, which is a new one I kind of like. It's a scavenger hunt. And then um, finally uh, Yelp, because Yelp has check-in. Oh, wait till you get into food spotting. Food spotting. Oh, yeah. You, you take pictures of food and let people know where you had this great, you know, granola bar. Or you would love this because it applies to this wine. This is part of the Facebook of thing too, right? You should get the food spotting guys on because they've got a great app. Deal. Um, we did promise folks in the past that we were going to continue the very popular iPad Spotted in the Wild. And you've actually done all my work for me because we had two, uh, two folks um, email in celebrity sighted iPad spotted in the wild. The first one sent in from Robert Watson in Tucson, Arizona. Eva Longoria on the set of Desperate Housewives, everyone. Seen carrying an iPad. She looks in full makeup, probably walking to or from her trailer. Look at that. Now she has her charger. She has her charger. Not a traditional iPad charger, by the way. I'm going to point that out. That is, is, that's is an it, old school. Or is it the official one? Maybe it is. I don't think it is. I think that's a laptop charger. Yeah, the, what is that? the official one's just like an iPhone. Yeah, it's small. Yeah. And it appears that she's using the Apple case. Ah, she's a tried and true <laughs> early adopter. <laughs> Do it the easy way. Talking about overanalyzing. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> is she is it is she wearing Max Factor? I don't know. Let's let's take a look. Let's see what that uh, hmm. Well, she, her hair looks lovely, lovely. That's for sure. Lovely. It's nice to know that uh, <laughs> that not only is Eva Longoria using an iPad, but the Desperate Housewives is still being shot. I Who love that knew? show. Next celebrity sighting, iPad spot in the wild, on the set of Little Red Riding Hood, sent in by Tony Upko from across the pond. And That's look, all he would tell us. Is that Mira Wachowski? It's Amanda Little Red Riding? Seyfried. Oh, I love her. She was from Mean Girls. Mean Girls. And is also on, uh, what what's is, the uh, polygamy show? Yes, True Love. True, big Love. Big Love. Yeah, she's, there she is. she's the daughter of Big Love. There it is. Using the iPod. It's the, it's, the, it's the modern basket for Little Red Riding Hood, apparently. And interestingly, no case, no, no case. charger. And she's got, I don't know, is that her pencil case on that? Up above I that? don't know. I think she's doing her schoolwork. I, or, or you know what we should do in in a future episode? There are a lot of script writing and reading apps yes. as well. I have for a movie couple. Movie producers and screenwriters and actors and Caltex, which is an open source one, is imported to the iPad. We'll do that. That'd be a good one. That would be a good one. Yeah. I agree. So iPads in the wild. In the wild. Celebrity sightings galore. Send yours in. They don't have to be celebrities, by the way. They could be anybody. <laughs> we just this is what you gave me, and they're pretty. So. This portion of the uh, iPad Today show brought to you by our friends at Squarespace. I know Sarah Lane is a Squarespace user. We use Squarespace uh, as our blogging platform. Oh, yes. At Inside Twit. Uh, it's uh, inside.twit.tv if you want to see our Squarespace site. Squarespace is where great websites begin. A fantastic platform for creating your new website. Alex Lindsay was uh, saying to us um, uh, uh, on um, Mac Break Weekly that a lot of web designers have kind of gotten out of the business because Squarespace makes it so easy to create a professional site for anybody. Whether you're a photographer, whether you want to do e-commerce, if you're blogging, 
if you want forums. They've got great iPhone app. You could use the iPhone app on the iPad. I wish they'd do an iPad app. Dane, Anthony, we want an iPad app. Yes. You can try it free right now for 14 days. Go to squarespace.com slash twit. We don't have an iPad Today link yet. Squarespace.com slash twit and take a look. My suggestion to you, if you're interested in Squarespace, is go to squarespace.com slash twit and click the examples button up there and see other people's sites. Sarah's is on there. Yeah. Kevin Rose. A lot of people use Squarespace. And the thing... It gives you a good idea of how diverse your website can look yeah. using the same platform. Exactly. I mean, these, look, at this is Don Imus's site. And you, you wouldn't look at it and say, oh, that's a Squarespace site. No. But he's got all the advantages of Squarespace. Easy design, easy modification. You can import from WordPress, TypePad, Blogger, um, movable type. You can export back out so you're never tied in there. And uh, Squarespace gives you great stats. And best of all, if you're a big shot like Imus, you don't ever have to worry about running out of bandwidth because Squarespace is a very, very slick VPS technology means as much bandwidth as you need when you need it at squarespace.com. Pricing's right, too. We're going to make it even better. It starts at $8 a month. If you use TWIT as your offer code, you'll get 10% off for the life of your site. 10% off for the life of your site. Squarespace.com slash TWIT. We thank them so much for their support. Of iPad today. Love the Squarespace. You know who else we love? Who else? Our viewers. We do love them. Our audience. People who listen, people who watch. Couldn't do a show without them. If you listen, I don't know what you're listening to because we're talking about a bunch of visual <laughs> things, but you can do whatever you want as long as you're enjoying yourself. Got a voicemail from Colin Davis from England, and he has an idea for an iPad Today segment, which I like to call iPad Confessions. Let's listen. The question could be, how has the iPad changed the way you live your business and personal life? And what can you achieve now that you couldn't achieve before? That's a good question. Has it answer. enriched or detracted from the quality of your life? I have one to start you off. So possessed have I become with the iPad that yesterday my wife Linda gave me an ultimatum. <laughs> Do not bring that thing to bed <laughs> or there will be consequences. <laughs> no decoding necessary. <laughs> Great show. Look forward to one every week. Oh, Thank Colin. You very much. Thank you, Colin. Thank That's, you, Colin. I, I've heard that ultimatum. First of all, Colin should do audiobooks. Yeah, I love his voice. I know. Second, uh, I'm very sorry about that, Linda. We'll try <laughs> to... Uh, I don't she, know. Actually, we're we're only making the problem worse because we're just going to keep doing the show. We have really. a word. We have a, a term <laughs> in the uh, in the cottage. LSS, long suffering spouse. Uh, Linda's obviously an LSS. She is Linda. We feel for you. <laughs> uh, don't quite have a solution, but uh, Colin Davis thinks. I think that's a great idea. I think. Um, so he had, that was a confession. That was yes. I, I'm calling them iPad confessions, but the the idea was all Colin. So thanks for that. If you have an iPad confession of your own, it could be good, it could be bad, or anything in between. You should let us know. You can call us at seven five seven five zero four iPad, or for extra points, you can send us a video. And you know who did that? Who already? did that? Who did that? Oh, one James Sapoznik, who lives in Manchester, New Hampshire. Let's hear from all him right? here. I want to let you know that I bought my iPad specifically for my kids as an educational tool. All the math apps, mm -hmm. the spelling apps, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, the reading apps on there are incredible and they use it all the time and they really love it and um, they're getting smarter. <laughs> so I love the show. Thank you very much. Tune in every week. Bye-bye. I'd, ag I'd agree. I think it's a... And Alex Lindsay has also said that. he uh, the, the Dr. Seuss books for his little... A uh, boy who's an early reader. Um, well, that's so funny. Somebody emailed uh, the Dr. Seuss. Let's do a books. survey of those. There's another category. Yeah. But uh, I haven't had occasion to download them because I don't have little kids, nor do you. But Alex says, you know, do you remember? You probably don't. But the Broderbund had a living books series where you there was Arthur and a bunch of other books. When my kids were little, this was on the computer. They would click and it would read to them and it was wonderful. This is so much more personal. See, when I was a kid, we had 45 records and you'd follow along and it would go ding. When yeah, supposed to change I remember the that. Page. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, because, you know, I grew up in the 50s. No, you didn't. Well, you it feels lie. like it sometimes. Well, you I didn't lie. have computers, that's for sure. I had little <laughs> I 45 up, records on my Fisher-Price record player. All right. No, I think, you know what, um... 
We've had a lot of feedback from people saying that uh, they the iPad is great for their kids. You know what would be interesting? And I think that this is probably something that James and maybe a lot of other people are running into. If you've got multiple people sharing a single iPad in the home, yeah. wouldn't multiple user accounts be a good idea? Now, this is not just multiple oh, iTunes accounts. they desperately account. need this. Because, you you know, you load up the iPad and yeah. you don't want the, the view that, you know, your older brother has. He's interested in all these sorts of different things. I would love to see that. I'm kind of with you on this one. I think this is a probably... Not everybody Everybody has their own iPad. Probably Steve Jobs saying, no, everybody should have their own iPad. Well, That's, I'm, I'm that almost nice? willing to bet that. You know, a computer has logins, you have different accounts. But I think Steve really feels like this is this is the in, ultimate in personal. Right. And I kind of understand, but not everybody could afford to spend five to eight hundred dollars on Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just not everybody. realistic for a family of oh. five to have five iPads. No. You're probably going to have one and everybody gets their time. You know what you need? What? Let me get it. Everybody should have this. A rubber ball? <laughs> no, a cleaner. Because when oh. you got the kids, <laughs> when you have the kids messing with your iPad, you need a good way to clean That's it. True. We've been using this uh, screen guard. Uh, there's also clear screen is very good. This is fun because it's a foam, and it has a little towel in the lid, and it's the best. If you, it, we use it before every show, and if you are. Letting kids use an iPad, you desperately need a good cleaner. You do. Hey, can I sh tell you something else just a behind the scenes little something? Totally. Last week we talked about the I love, I dash L U V dot com, the glare guards that Steve Gibson recommended. Right. And you promised that you'd you'd show us how I it was works. gonna put it on. We ran out of time in the show, but I have put it on now. And let me tell you, that's one of the reasons these screenshots look so good. Look, there's so it's turned the glossy iPad screen into a matte screen. Now I happen to like glossy screens, but if you don't or if you have the same issue we have, which is you're shooting this on camera, look how much nicer. I don't know if you've noticed, but how much nicer. It looks so much yeah. better. See, look at mine. I mean, you can you awesome. could show you could make looks. Look I could do my you. makeup in that. Look at that. Ooh, hey, is, everybody. That's meta, all right. <laughs> wow. But uh, but I mean, that's why I got this 17 inch matte screen. I yeah. love the matte. Yeah. The matte is just it's it glossy. Looks I'm a glossy nice. guy, but you don't have a choice, and that's the point. On the iPad, you don't have a choice, and now you do. These are fourteen dollars. You can find them. Uh, I dash love dot com sells them for twenty. Amazon has them for fourteen dollars for two. You will want two. Steve Gibson told me that because the first one is always a flop, partly because there's dust, microscopic dust, and every bit of dust on there gives you a little air bubble. So I I swore I said no, I can do this. Never did do it. I did it on the Gizwiz. Never quite got it right. However, you put the first one on, you, you learn how to do it, you peel it off, it takes all the dust with it. The second one went on, and there's not an air bubble at all in here. It's it looks beautiful. so good. You can see a little bubble here just on the edge, but this I, I never worked on it because this, the uh, case hides it anyway. But that's what a bubble will look like, and you don't want that. <laughs> so be prepared. It's $15. They, they give you two, but it's, it takes some effort to do it right. But once you get it on there... If you want a matte screen, this is the way to do it. Do you want a matte screen? Should I get one for you? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you I want matte all the way, you know? It's how, yeah. it's how I do my makeup, and it's how I like my <laughs> oh, iPad. Oh, no, I'm shiny. <laughs> I'm shiny. Get rid of the grease. Should right. we, should we uh, move on to the best part of the show, the show that everyone waits with bated breath for week after week? We put on our app caps. It's the app caps Awards. Caps. And thanks once Woo. again to Fezorama.com for our fabulous Twit Fezes, the app caps of Gosh, the week. My my bangs have... <laughs> You've got a fringe on your th cap. Things have gotten weird. Oh, wait a minute. Now, you look so cute in that. That is Thank adorable. You. Isn't she cute in her little app cap? Mm. So our app cap award goes to the uh, application of the week that we really particularly like. I've got one, Leo. All right. I've got one. If Ready you're familiar with the folks at Cool Iris. They do a, a plug-in for um, Firefox, I think, that is a really nice way to look at images. Yeah, yeah. They also they also have a web app. Um, it's a it's sort of a way to browse the web that's that's much more visual. So they've got an iPad app called Discover. And what they've done, it's so cool. They've oh, it's made Wikipedia. Wikipedia a photo-esque uh, magazine, in a way. And actually, I have to give credit to MG because he's the one who showed me this. Here, I'll show you uh, in magazine mode. So what, what Discover this does... This is fantastic. If you're, if you're sort of just interested in... And I can't be the only one who literally just goes to Wikipedia oh, sometimes no. just I to waste it. some time and get lost in some information. Yeah. What, they've, uh, what they've suggested to me is, how about Constantine the Second of Scotland? You want to know more about him? Let's just say I do. I probably wouldn't normally, but let's just say I do. So I'll go, yeah, sure, let's do that. Now... 
in the bottom area, it'll say downloading from Wikipedia because it has to pull a bunch of Wikipedia information each so time we get into one of these things. It won't so work offline. You need to have it online. It, it has to be online. But then, so let's say, okay, so we're at Constantine of Scotland. What I can do is I can just go through these pages... Or in the related articles section, this is a lot like Wikipedia, but it's just organized better. So let's say I want to go, oh, okay, yeah, fantastic. let's go into Malcolm I of Scotland, who probably preceded him, and learn a little more about this. Now, let's say that you go, all right, well, this seems cool, but this is just not stuff I'm interested in. I can't imagine, you know, caring about Constantine. Uh, that's fine, because you can, you can search Wikipedia just like you would normally. Mm. So I could put in anything right now, and just to show you... I uh, searched you earlier, Leo. So uh -oh. I just searched Leo Gordon Laporte on Wikipedia, and it's great what comes up because <laughs> what comes up now I'm worried. Well, it's a beautiful. Oh, picture it's a of nice you. image, and look how they yeah. the typefaces. And it's and a little bit about you, some of your background. So they take the sections and they turn them into magazine style sections. Exactly, and you've got a couple different views that you can look this at. This is quite nice. Then you know, there's a screensavers link, and I, of course, I was interested in that, and I clicked on that. Again, it downloads the stuff from Wikipedia. So and I've there've been a number of Wikipedia apps for the iPhone and the I iPad, but there's nothing Evan. like this. This is the most lovely of them. Oh, all. it's the best. It's so cool because I will say that um, over the years, I, I love Wikipedia as much as I always did, mm -hmm. but. If I had to gripe about anything, it's that it's ugly and, you know, there's right. not much to it. So search for Discover, and there are several Discovers. You'll get Wikipedia in a magazine as one of your search results. It is free, which is awfully nice. It's completely free. And not You can start only, with a new cover every day. Oh, and you know what a fun little trick is? Mm. When you first load it, mm -hmm. it'll suggest something to you. And if you don't like it, you shake the iPad and it'll say, okay, fine. I'll give you another random suggestion. <laughs> I love it. Isn't that great? So I could swipe through the They've photo got photo of the, day. of the day. Yeah, so these are choices that they have. But if you don't like it, you can go... Nah, let's shake. And then it'll say, okay, well, let's just give you something else. I think you have to shake when you're, when you're in uh, portrait mode, not landscape mode. Okay. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is really great. And if you want to know more, you just tap the article. Oh, it's downloading. I see. See, this yeah. is what you were talking about. There's a little does, delay. There's a little lag at the beginning when yeah. it pulls all the information that you might yeah. want. So it gives you some tips and things like that. But I got to tell you. Uh, if I'm going to browse Wikipedia and I was just looking up this, this <laughs> don't oh, I, hurt yourself. I broke my, my, <laughs> don't no. break it. That's really nice. I really like yeah. that. And you know, there, we were That's talking so about educational fun. uses for the iPad. Wikipedia so is a great educational resource. You want, I remember when I was a kid reading the encyclopedias and, uh, I think you want kids to be browsing through items like this. I think that's really a neat idea. And know? Wikipedia, I mean, let's face it, it's at the top of uh, you know, half of my search results when oh, I'm yeah. searching for something oh, anyway. Yeah. I love having the option a lot of schools. To, to look at it differently on the iPad because I don't particularly like reading Wikipedia on the web. It's just right. that the information is so great. Boy, they did a nice job on this. That is really beautiful. Isn't that fun? Thanks, Cool Iris. Mm -hmm. Now, my app is kind of a meta app. It's the kind of app that people who listen to this show probably would be very interested in. And in fact, I think it was a, a listener to this show or a viewer of this show who suggested it. It's called App Advice. It's from a webpage of the same name. And really, it's just kind of an app uh, app review page. Would you like to review? No, I hate it when they do this because it pulls you out of the app if you say yes. It pulls you into the iTunes store. They're asking me if I want to review it later. But right now, there it is. There's the app advice. So it's got app news on this side. It's got featured stories. If you like this show, this is kind of a, a, a static version of, of a lot of the content that's on this show um, in an application. Uh, so this is this is for people who are absolute junkies. There's only one negative on this one. What is it? It ain't free. A dollar ninety nine for app advice from appadvice. Uh, dot com. Then again, if you're if you feel sort of overwhelmed and inundated with yeah. apps that may or not be good, right. and you need somebody, I mean, it's like buying a magazine to help you figure exactly. out which I. And you only buy it once, and it's always updated. And the nice thing about this is it really does keep you up to date on what's new in applications and so forth. It's appadvices.com has always been one of the places I've gone to look for apps for the show. So it this brings it to your yeah, iPad. Yeah, it used to be, what was it like, iPhone app world, or right. they, they changed got, it to app advice because they realized, hey, we can, we can open this up to a lot more devices. Absolutely. 
And I, and, uh, I, I have to like say, one of the things that's really going well, uh, I think, for the iPad is people are thinking of new ways to display content like this. I thought the Cool Iris was an example. Of course, mm -hmm. we've looked at Plus and Flipboard before. This also has that kind of Flipboardy feel to it or Plus feel to it. Very much. I like what people are doing with, uh, with the interfaces now on the iPad to make it really easy to Me read. Me too. It's so great to just see things being done differently. You know? Can you I believe... We're having a, a web renaissance. I agree. Can you believe we have three commercials in this show? Mm, I, I'm glad we do. We want to really because thank I love all of our sponsors. advertisers for supporting this show. This is fantastic. And I think some, somewhat, this is Russ Pitts says to rap. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> we're only 15 minutes long. <laughs> Real we're quickly. Almost, we're almost done, Russ. <laughs> Russ Pitts was a, an old producer, a uh, web so, producer on the Screensavers who... Line producer then. Line producer? Who used to pull out his hair because... We would never wrap on time. Yeah. And it, he quit with he the threw most... He a pencil at me once. He pulled a Michael Slater... Was that the guy who pulled the uh, the escape slide? Uh, Two words. Slide? Eagle semen. <laughs> he wrote one of those classic <laughs> letters. If we could find it, we'll read it to you. Oh, Prager has it. Prager he has saved it? saved it. Yeah. I, one day. When people quit with bravado, with gusto, with flair, in this email. case, via email. To the whole company. Because there wasn't about a, 450. If there had been an escape slide at Tech TV, he would have pulled it. Well, you know what the, the best part of this is? I always have to tell the story when this gets brought up. Russ, I'm sorry. We love but Russ. He, he sent the email. Everyone knew that it was his last day. Yep. And people started to read the email. And he got up triumphantly, walked out. And as the door slammed behind him, you hear someone go, Who's Russ Pitts? <laughs> It was, just the best. it was the best. He was a great guy. Look, folks, Love him. I apologize in advance. If you hated Tech TV or you never heard of Tech TV, it's just going to be uh, something you're going to always hear about on this it's, network. We can't help ourselves. There's we, just so much history there. <laughs> we got the story. Hey, real quickly, before we go, and we maybe next week we'll have that Russ Pitts letter from David Prager, <laughs> uh, but uh, I do want to mention our friends at iStock Photo. What a great place for people who do blogging or websites. You know, I told you about Squarespace, but anytime you blog, I'm sure you, you do this, Sarah Lane, you, there should be an image in every blog post, right? You should totally. always, it's just, yeah. otherwise it's plain text. All the good blogs do it and you don't even notice it until someone doesn't have that and then you go, oh, this blog is boring. It's, it seems unfinished. If you're looking at Pulse, for instance, and you're looking at people's blogs, if there's no, if there's no graphic with the blog, you're just going to get a plain text post like this. That stinks. Yeah. There's the New York Times. Come on, Times. Let's have some images like these other guys. Even if the content's good, it all looks the same. You got to stand out. I stock photo. That's the place to go. The original source for high quality stock images, not just images, media, design elements uh, on the web, Music, royalty free. They've got flash files, sound effects, 3D renders, all sorts of good stuff. Logos are coming. Yeah, even. I love that. iStockphoto.com slash iPad show. If you go there right now, they have a special offer just for you. They've been doing it for 10 years and they've gotten better and better. Almost all the pros I know who've been doing blogs or websites, uh, doing podcasts, who need royalty-free quality images starting as low as a dollar each, they go to iStock Photo. For 15% off bundles of 50 credits or more, go to iStockPhoto.com slash iPad Show. We love you, iStock Photo. Thank you for supporting Thank you, iStock Photo. iPad today. We love you. We love you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on iPad today. It's been a great show. See you next week. In the meantime, go to twit.tv slash IPT to subscribe and download and watch everything. And Russ Pitt says, that's a wrap. <laughs> Yay. I thought you were going to say, and Russ Pitt says, Screw you, Eagle Seaman! <laughs> what? What? Do, do you, anybody want to do a dramatic, I'd like to do a dramatic reading of that letter. Oh, it's, it's, it, it's, you don't even have, you could read it monotone, it would still be dramatic. I probably have it somewhere. Sorry oh. we're so long. It you was know, one of the most wonderful masterpieces ever to come out of Tech TV. It was a memory.